Hi everybody, I'm Alad Wallach, the CEO of ADOC, and today uh, we're gonna chat about generative AI versus precision AI. It's a fact that healthcare data is very multimodal, meaning you have images, you have labs, you have text, you have to integrate all of that. It is very high dimensionality, right? And we see that even ChatGPT sometimes gets confused when you feed it enough context. I don't know if you try to play around with like uh, bigger and bigger context sizes, you see the ChatGPT loses accuracy. Think about, think about that, but like hundreds times bigger. As an example, the context size today for ChatGPT is around 100,000 tokens. A typical CT image would have 100 million pixels, right? And the signal we're detecting could be 10 small pixels, which, you know, which is the brain bleed in that massive city image. Are there things we can do to maybe reduce that dimensionality? For sure. But I'm saying inherently, we're talking about a very complex, high dimensionality, high data problem to solve and find a very subtle signal in that mountain of data. Gen AI held a, holds a lot of primus, right? And despite all the hype and hyperbole and people talking about Gen AI, also think it's the most informative thing that happened to the healthcare space. Um, but I just have to think we need to be cautious in how we integrate this technology into practice. Today at least, and I'll say it with humility because who knows what tomorrow will bring, um, Gen AI really um, lacks that level of accuracy we're expecting. So I think when people think about gen, generative AI in clinical domain, they imagine something that could basically, you know, look at an exam and, and say whatever is wrong with it or answer any question on the text. Um, I think we're not there yet. As we look at the experiments, we look at the, at the data, we see that generative AI really is significantly lower accuracy compared to kind of precision AI, especially on complex data types like imaging. So in my mind, we just have to be cautious and temper our expectations of how it can be used. Precision AI, I would say, is the, the deep learning capabilities that have been invented over the last five years that allow us to really reach breakthrough accuracies uh, on identifying specific, uh, specific disease or specific elements. Uh, what's great about Precision AI, it, it can reach superhuman performance. Um, and again, I don't think it has to replace the human, but definitely a human plus a superhuman assistant can uh, can have an amazing level of accuracy together. And I think that that is what excites me the most about precision AI, that it is really, um, it would really allow us to surpass uh, the quality barriers we have today. We also have to remember the, the stakes of the decision making. Um, it's one thing to, you know, draft an email and worst case, if, you know, you've got a typo or you phrase something wrong. Uh, it's a whole nother case to tell, uh, you know, a patient wrongly, you know, they have cancer or, or by the way, miss that. So I think the stakes are really, really high and our requirements of reliability of the system are also really high, which is, again, why I think, at least in the near future, Precision AI is going to really give us that ability to reach consistently, reliably, superhuman performance by, by using AI.